Okay, it's time to discuss Chit Chat. Um, Chit Chat came out of this piece of music, which was originally called The Nice Song, because you need a working title. Um, this was turned into a demo I called Energy Star after the um, certification for appliances, Energy Star. Um, then Limousine sampled it in Holographic Virtual Reality Arcade Simulator on uh, Amiga Mall X, which came out in 2020. Um, this sounds, none of this sounds like Chit Chat, uh, because I started writing a whole new song in the middle of this, and we will move along to another project. We'll just play through this a bit more. Chit Chat was very complicated. It's very uh, a very winding, meandering road to get to the end of Chit Chat, um, which we will all shall be revealed. So that's 2012.3804.npr from the Nice Song. So that's the uh, like that's a project from 2012. Might just uh, yep. Okay, so. Then moving along, we opened it in um, in March 2015, and at the end of a session, which would have lasted a couple of hours, on the 9th of March, um, Chit Chat emerges out of that piece I call Energy Star. Um, so. Energy Star gets a little more um, fully formed and I would have split it off to another project once I knew that Chit Chat was, had come out of it because So in trying to write another section for Energy Star I actually accidentally write Chit Chat on the 9th of March 2015 So we have this voice wave, voice wave program, which is actually super synth that's been modified to just be, um, just be voice wave. No other patches in the combi for Core Game One. It's just the straight waveform. You can just see the full sustain filter open all the way. Not quite there yet. Then I've uh, grabbed my sample of my own voice that I would have sampled in 2006, 2005. They're included also in the materials for the for the library submission on this. What else have we got here? Yeah, there's the middle section. So in a day we go from Energy Star to Chit Chat and we basically have all of the parts of Chit Chat ready to go and then I continue working on it. We'll open up the last version now because there are so many versions. 2015, 2015. Da, 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 da. Okay, so by the end of April, or by 19th of April 2015, we have Chit Chat, which I'll open the conformed archive version, which makes sense. So Chit Chat is kind of a Mark Mothers Boz, like a Rugrats, um, Rugrats soundtrack with all the vocal sampling from the early 90s, and a lot of actually is other stuff in liquid television and kind of as air music is it air for Hawaiian punch um, there was a big thing with samplers because when they first came out they've got audio inputs but the first thing you can do with the sampler is plug a microphone in and start sampling your voice and that's pretty much the, the first thing you, you you do with a sampler especially if it's sort of new tech um, you don't want to go setting up microphones and getting finding a studio and recording off individual notes when you can it's much more uh, idiomatic to just pick up a microphone and go blah 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 into it for the first time. Um, so 
a lot of sort of novelty music um, ends up being built around vocal samples. So we've got um, my my own voice samples. We've got um, a sample from the Emulator 2 Emu factory library. Um, we've got the voice waveforms from the wavetable synth in Core BM1. Um, obviously called Chit Chat. It's about talking. Um, also, there's a sort of phrasing that's kind of chit chat, chit chat, chit chat, chit chat, chit chat, chit chat, chit So, the song title does what it says on the tin, conceptually and musically. So, a little pizzicato synth. Plenty of swing on it. Here's it without swing. Not great. A kind of counter arpeggio. The uh, bass line's been absolutely cranked with a heart, with a um, at least a three six three zero compressor and everything else, trying to get those top end cranking. This um, half time with the double time arpeggio. You've got a you've got a fast element with a slow element. I had to sum it's all all these off, sorry. So like a half time beat that ends up becoming a a, a normal time beat. Um, I like that this intro takes like a minute to sort of kick in. Also that halftime halftime drum sensation is something I like from uh, dubstep and kind of footwork, like a kind of double half thing happening. Um, also YMO did it a lot with the uh, on Technodelic, the 1981 record, Ye Yellow Magic Orchestra. This kind of it's fun. So these phrases sort of inherit the half timeness of the drums. Each each sort of set of phrases is linked to like a drum sample. Kick, snare, kick, snare, snare, kick, snare, and then fill the space. So this is a kind of um, process that I I did first on. Uh, iPod Touch on Lap of Luxury, the eyeliner album. Um, as you can sort of see, it's not. Oh yeah, it does look quite, quite obvious. That things get more complex over time. The development is. It's not so much. It's not like harmonic richness, and it's not like a, a, a resolution. The development is just sort of more busy, and a little less busy, in kind of this ratcheting up the tension by having all these elements sort of poking in and out. The drum kit is a uh, different instances of Korg uh, Korg wave, wave Station where because I'm using instrument tracks I only get a stereo output pair but if we mute off each individual drum see if you can see on this channel there's, there's a muted snare or a muted hi-hat there's muted vibra slap and ride cymbal the, these assignments are different when it comes to actually being input into wave station but the important thing is that one drum at a time this one is it's here it's the snare but it's actually the kick drum so I wrote the beat using a drum assignment in one instance of wave station then you just duplicate them out solo off each drum oh, that's the hi-hat is the hi-hat or the snare? it's the snare Yeah, so the idea again, just like of duplicating and muting as a way of 
because there are boundless there's no limit on the amount of instances you can have of the, of the the synthesizer so suddenly if you want an individual output for kick snare and percussions you just got to split off the sequence duplicate out the instances of the drum program and then suddenly you can treat each inst instrument as a separate channel i can still trigger a kick drum off the hi hat hi hat channel if i want Trying to find a channel that's muted. Eh? If we go into the kick, we still have all the all the drum assignments, but just the kick. These are all duplicated instances, and it's just a matter of what we're triggering into it, not what they necessarily are. They're all the same, but each track has a different note triggering it for each drum instrument. I hope that makes sense. The idea that you can infinitely duplicate something to make its make it sort of extend out beyond its original original prescription is an incredibly powerful thing in the digital audio space. Welcome to my manifesto. Um, yeah, so these are and these are all bust out to one thing called drum sum. Actually no percussions and hi-hat come straight out to the stereo channel. Which might have been a bit of a goof, but it sounds fine. Oh, that's right. This this hi hat didn't the hi hat didn't make it into the um the final version because it sounded too much um, compared to on top of the um on top of the lead lines. The the idea was that the hi hat would sort of echo. As you have a do do ba 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 ba, you have a t -t 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 in the same the same rhythm. Too much though, because you're just hearing you're just hearing sibilance on top of the the patch that's playing that main melody line. You've already got a da. You don't need a t -t -t on top of it. little bit of pizzicato synth again just to ground it a bit more and then straight into the um, this kind of catalog of different sounds as development so there's me going oh so kind of using tambo more than anything else to uh, to build tension and develop and it's totally rugrats -y. And then out of nowhere, the, the, the full-time drums come in. That's this, uh, for me, this is kind of this idea of like a, an instant change in a piece of ad music where it's like the, the resolution happens and then, you know, the, 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 the call gets answered. Let's wind it up a little more. And I like that that just sort of happens out of nowhere. It's a nice easy tempo. It's like a slow walking tempo, which I really like. You can you can walk on stage to it quite well when, when I'm playing it. You can do like a sort of a fake walk. So this isn't so much hocketing as, as like just playing, interplaying the same phrase between two things, but it does end up hocketing in the second section. So hocketing, in my mind, that's what I call it, uh, just switching instruments on a single phrase. Um, and we'll hear, that, we'll hear that later on. But it's this kind of this this part relates to the second second idea, but the interplay happens sort of twice, four times as quick. This is that kind of swing thing again, this kind of tap dancing. This kind of like, I don't know what it is, top hat thing. Then we have Sample Tank doing some ooze. 
nice to be able to put Sample Tank in there because it is a sort of um, spiritual successor of Core Gen 1 and Wave Station. Uh, it's a sort of a wavetable synth, but the, the, the amount of RAM it uses is so much more that it sounds a lot more realistic. So. So this is kind of a middle eight section, sort of. And it's kind of, for me, got this kind of amicable, like advertising music, like, uh, it's sort of trying to tell you something. It's like it's 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 treating you nice. Here's the hocket. Emulator two. There's me going bo. Put it down low. There's bo. Then a b. Then a bar. And dog bar. And there are the two two slap bass notes these are to satisfy the requirement that every song has slap bass and of course because I'm sarcastic kitsch idiot it has to be like one it has to be two notes you know just to show off um, what else have we got we have, we have little zaps that I made in synth one so this is a a full resonance filter sweep on an envelope. Uh, we can. There's the actual note with the long delay, long long decay time on the envelope. But uh, when the filter resonance is, of course, close to full, you get self oscillation. So it's just a self oscillation sweep. Um, these these kind of things were used in um, electrofunk a lot, and I just thought it it needed something like just a little bit out of left field to you can't hit they're not that high in the mix but you get the idea It's chit chat. Um, not much else to say about it. Not too much harmonic development in it. If I was writing a new song, like at least like this now, it would be much more sort of harmonically complicated. Have a more grandiose sense of development, I think. But this one's happy being what it is. Um, yeah. Glad I put this middle eight sort of section, but whatever it is, before the end sort of exposition. Especially here when everything sort of kicks in. Oh yeah, for some reason there are two hocketed sections in the groups. There is hocket two and there is Hocket group, no, no echo. Like, what I did was I set it up so that there were two separate buses. There was one for the end, um, one for the end samples, which had echo on it because the end is echoing out. You know, you go from a dry, a dry sound to an echo sound. But what I ended up doing process-wise was just sort of shifting things between each other and just like moving between sample bar, sample R, sample B, sample Bo, sample RG. Um, which is that um, emulator too. So it sounds like feel like AIR one, the classic vocal samples. Um, sort of setting something up that's sort of messy and dirty, but then using it as a way to sort of explore. You know, I can grab this. We could we can move this to anything else. We can split this and move this over here. We can split that and move this down here and just. 
save that but anyway we are, we luckily we're working on a backup um so yeah this uh, that that whole section is sort of based around the idea of program changes uh with midi you know like suddenly something happens you push the wrong button and then you're on another patch and it's still playing this the same the same riff this kind of like interrupting the melody with different timbers interrupting yeah uh interrupting something with sort of a hard cut Not my dog. It's a sample from a kid's kid's toy that I got off my buddy, my buddy on IRC, probably in 1998. Um, so there you have it. There is the long-winded tale of chit chat. Oh, also, no, I've just spotted. Actually, there is this um, this uh, arpeggiator. Can I get that hooked up? Because that's quite cool. Uh, yes, I can. So there is. This is this MIDI. I love my little MIDI tools. Um, this is a MIDI arpeggiator that should do something if I can just figure out yes some of us will do it if we just or maybe it won't It's just gone quiet. Okay. Turn off, read. I swear I'm getting there. Here we go. So this is the original chord progression played into a MIDI arpeggiator, which will split up the notes and play them. You can actually contrast and compare by... Oh, don't look behind there, there's too many things. You'll go mad. The timing's not perfect, but yeah, so it's a little, it's a little doohickey where I'm playing these long notes, these long chords into the um, into the plugin, and it'll split them up and arpeggiate them automatically. You can see them playing on here. Or actually, if we open up the the VST itself, pretty quick. But uh, so yeah, you can actually plug in. You can plug in a mini generator like Chord Space or Tone Space, or actually Improvisator. I don't know if this is the original pattern from Improvisator, but you can go from a MIDI, MIDI generator into the software arpeggiator and then play up a software synthesizer. And then as you're playing a generated chord progression, we'll split it up and play it quickly over, over the uh, keyboard for you automatically. So it's those kind of setting up those kind of systems. Um, To sort of you, you set something up which will sort of react to a very simple stimulus and give you something quite complex and it's, it's quite fun but but way but a good way to sort of get your brain in a different um headspace so that's the headspace of chit chat it's a uh deceptively simple song with an incredibly long-winded story and that's the story <laughs>